African egg eating snake Roo. I've had her for about five months now and she's just been in a temporary setup with Aspen and I don't really like the way that looks. The plan has always been to put her into a bioactive or naturalistic setup. So that's what I've done and I'm going to show you the entire process of doing the background and then setting up the enclosure and this video is also in partnership with Arcadia Reptile. All of the heating, lighting and also some of the substrate is by Arcadia so I will talk about that in the rest of the video but let me show you how the enclosure went from this to this. Okay so I started with the background and you were going to see some interesting croc and pyjama combinations in this video because I just stopped caring but I was arranging where to put things, I had some idea of where I wanted things but this was quite tricky because they would just not stay in place, I was taping them to the exoterra and they kept slipping around so not sure if this is the best method but I was putting things to have climbing opportunities because egg eating snakes are semi arboreal, they will climb to look for food in bird nests so I wanted to mimic that. I then went in with the expanding foam, I wasn't being too careful with this because it doesn't really matter too much how it looks, it's all getting covered up later on anyway but just making sure I have a thick enough layer that I can carve out later on and I'm doing the background and also the two sides just to give her a nice amount of coverage and make her feel a lot more secure. And then for one of the side pieces, I actually bought this piece of cork. I found this in a reptile store for 50p and I thought, yep, that is going on my background. So just put that randomly on one of the side bits and use expanding foam to hold that in place. Once all of that was dry, it was time to carve off the expanding foam. Basically, for anyone that's not too familiar with making reptile backgrounds, you want to make sure you cut off all of the smooth surface of the expanding foam, just because whatever you're putting on after this, whether it's silicone or grout, needs a rough surface to stick to. So just making sure you've got no smooth surfaces left. And of course, also carving in any rocks or crevices into that and making a design that as well so that's basically what I'm doing in these clips is just taking off all of that smooth surface and making some sort of crevices just to make it look a bit more naturalistic and a bit more of like a rocky texture. This did prove a bit tricky with all of the branches in the way but I got there in the end. then just made sure to brush off any loose pieces of expanding foam from the background and these are substrates I went for to make the background cocoa core or cocoa soil, sphagnum moss and also loose fine pieces of orchard bark chips just to add a bit of texture so before that it was time to silicone and this was honestly my least favourite part I struggled massively with this so initially I tried applying this with a paintbrush I'd seen other people do this on YouTube and it seemed to work okay for them but this was far too slow I was fearing that it was going to dry up before I'd even done one tiny section so I had to get some help I tried the paintbrush but it just wasn't working so I ended up just rubbing this in with my hands with the gloves on towards the end I went completely feral and just used my bare hands instead because I was just getting so fed up with this it took so long and I really wish I'd done this outside because the smell of this was almost killing me off. I don't know how anyone does this. 
without any sort of mask on or anything because I had a bunch of windows open but sticking your head in that tank it was making me feel lightheaded. I thought I was gonna pass out at one point. I sound so dramatic but this was definitely the worst part. It stunk and it was awful and I had to just do this really really quick so I didn't actually film too much of this. I just really wanted to get this part done because it was not fun. <laughs> But yeah, I just applied this really generously to the background, making sure to cover all of the gaps or crevices. I think in total, for all three sides, I used four tubes of this, and then I'm just putting on the substrate, starting with the biggest pieces first, so the orchard bark chips, then the sphagnum moss, then the cocoa soil, and pressing this down to help it stick. After I left each side to stick and cure for about 6 to 12 hours, I tipped this up and really gently brushed off any loose pieces that hadn't stuck. Some sides I did have to go back in and re silicone areas and stick some more sphagnum moss on just because some places hadn't stuck as well but generally it all stuck really well. What I didn't film is the mess I made with the silicone. I was just trying to get this done as quickly as possible. If I did this again, I'd probably tape things just to protect it from the mess that I was making, but I did get a fair bit of this onto the doors, which was a bit annoying because I probably should have taken this off before it fully dried just to make it easier, but it did come off with a Stanley knife. So this is her finished background, as I said I did have to go back in and add more silicone and sphagnum moss in places that I'd missed that you can kind of see in this clip here but she's got all of her branches to climb on, she's also got a cork log at the back that she can climb in and out of so I cannot wait to see her do that, hopefully I can get some good clips of that but I did modify one of the branches to add a bird's nest, I bought this bird nest from eBay that doesn't look the most naturalistic but I can always cut those weird plastic leaves off later on. All I did was use a hot glue gun and stick this to the branch and this is going to mimic what she would have in nature where she would have to seek out birds eggs in the nest and hunt them down and eat them so that's kind of what I was going for with this, making her actually have to work and seek for her food by climbing up into a bird's nest. I then just glued some air plants onto the background and the branches. I feel like this made them look a lot less out of place and a lot more natural just by adding in a bit of greenery. Then it was time to add in the substrate and I started by using these clay balls by Haberstadt as the drainage layer and to separate this from the soil and stop the soil from mixing in I used this hydro matting from Swell Reptiles I think it was. I way prefer this to the white one I used in Orbit My Leopard Gecko's Tank. It doesn't stand out as much and I definitely prefer this. When it comes to the substrate itself, I used Earth Mix by Arcadia. This is packed full of minerals and nutrients to help the plant growth. And I used about two bags of this. I probably could have done with a third, but I really just wanted to get this done. So I topped it up with other substrates too. I had a bit left of the cocoa fiber sphagnum moss mixture from the background, so I added that in too. And I also had some of the orchard bark chips left over, so I put those in as well, just to add a bit more texture. So for the plants, I've had these for a couple of weeks prior to doing this and we've gone for a Boston Fern and also a Golden Pothos and don't worry I did loosen the roots and take some of the soil off the roots, I just didn't film this because I was doing this on the floor but I did do that. And for the Boston Fern I thought this would look really nice in this back corner growing up towards the branch. 
Then I started adding in some of the hides. This is honestly the nicest piece of cork I have ever seen. It wasn't cheap, but the idea of her climbing out the hole at the top made it all worth it. So this is going in in front of the Boston Fern. Then we have this hide. This is her humid hide and also her favorite hide to sit in. She curls up so small in this and I don't really like it. I don't really like the way it looks, but because it's her favorite, I added it in, and inside is just sphagnum moss for humidity. This one I pushed right into this corner, and because I don't like the way it looks too much, I did mostly cover this with the golden pothos, just to kind of add it in and make it look not as fake because it's obviously not a natural hide, and I wanted to cover this as much as possible, but it's, it's okay. just adding in some slate and some rocks to add some texture to the ground of the enclosure and trigger warning look away if you have that phobia of things that have lots and lots of holes in I also put in the seed pod for the isopods then just adding in some leaf litter these are mango leaves that I also bought from swell reptiles I think So for the heating, I'm using the deep heat projector by Arcadia. I've had this and used this with her since I got her. This one is the matte black colour and I really really like this colour but this of course is hooked up to a dimming thermostat and I'm just putting the probe in and then kind of resting this between the hide and between the rock. Then of course also adding in a hygrometer to measure the humidity. These snakes need between 50 to 60% humidity in their enclosure and this was something that was really hard to maintain with Aspen so although it is a popular choice I am really glad to see the back of it. So when it comes to her water bowl this is her old water bowl and it just would not fit in the gap it's quite a long narrow gap that it had to fit in but that's fine because I don't really like this anyway it's kind of a really ugly unnatural yellow colour so instead I'm using this Pyrex dish and this fits in the gap really well and I just blended this in with the substrate then I added in some springtails this is the most interesting way that I've been sent springtails in a plastic bag and I bought these from eBay just because none of my local reptile stores or reptile shows had any springtails but there's not that many in there, I probably will have to top these up. And I also added in some of my giant orange isopods. I have way too many of these at the moment, so they also went in as the cleanup crew too. As well as that, I also put in some of Arcadia's custodian fuel just to feed them and keep them going whilst the enclosure gets established. I also went in and taped the front vents of the Exoterra with black electrical tape just because I'm so sick of having isopods walking around my house and finding them in the bathroom. This should hopefully stop that. So as I mentioned before, this video is in partnership with Arcadia Reptile. They have sent me UVB and also LED, and providing UVB is so important for reptiles so they can synthesize D3, and that is really important for their health. Even reptiles or snakes that are hiding during the day, they will still utilize low levels of UVB because it does bounce into where they're laying. So they have sent me the Prote5 Shade Dweller Max and this is a full spectrum UVB and it's slightly longer than other UVB lighting on the market to cover more of the snake's body in the enclosure. It's a great option for snakes to promote self-regulated basking whilst also posing very little risk to the snake itself by being exposed to high levels of UVB, particularly arboreal species like Rue that can climb to the top of their enclosures. They have also sent the 22 watt Jungle Dawn LED bar and this helps to promote plant growth in the tank and this LED bar mimics the natural sunlight as closely as possible and the great thing about these is you can pair these with the UVB to save on plug socket space and also you can have them come on at the same time using a timer. So I highly recommend Arcadia's products, I've been using them for a few years now, whether it's the heating, lighting, substrate or supplements, if you're not sure what equipment to use, the team at Arcadia are there to help and they also have so much useful information on their website as well as a section where you can put in your species 
and it will tell you what UVB would be best for them. So highly recommend checking out their products and also their website. So that is everything and here is the finished enclosure. One last addition is this security camera by Wise. This is fully waterproof and it attaches to the mesh with a magnet. And this has been such a fun addition because she is quite elusive. I don't see much of her during the daytime. And with this, I can watch her explore and see what she gets up to. So I recommend this if you have a snake that you don't see much of. This has been a really, really good addition. So here is Rue exploring her new enclosure and also all of the security footage. guys have enjoyed seeing Rue and her new enclosure she loves it that much she is really ready to go back in there so I'm gonna put her back but I hope you guys have enjoyed this video don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you in my next video bye say bye